probably one of the main aspects of this boat that I've been kind of hiding away from you uh, over the last few episodes has been that of the electrics. And that's because over the last few months, and in fact, from well over a year ago now, I've installed the basis of how I want the, the low voltage circuits of the boat to work. And uh, basically because I filmed most of this uh, after I installed all of the key electrics, I'm now gonna be sort of doing a bit of a rewind uh, and to catch you guys all up, because I tell you what, I'm not going to dismantle all of this to pretend that I've done it from scratch. Uh, for, for, the, for the good of the camera. So um, basically what I'm going to do is show you my, the main thinking behind why I've set up the electrics like I have. Uh, what I'm really keen to do whenever I do anything important on a boat is to actually do the work myself. And that, may, that means a lot of research, a lot of reading and a lot of learning by making mistakes because that means that when potentially if something ever goes awry in the future, I know how it's put together and I know how I can then fix that. That's the principle that's running through so many aspects of this boat. I mean, I'm not a, an expert painter, an expert um, boat builder. I'm not an expert electrician. Uh, but what I've tried to do is understand as much as I can about all the different aspects because I feel that that basis of knowledge is going to pay dividends later on, particularly if and when things go wrong, because they always do on expeditions, particularly when you're a really long way away from anywhere. So the main basis of the power systems on board Allen is going to be a number of 12 volt batteries, which I'm putting together into series in order to get 24 volts, because I think that's a good balance uh, between 12 and 48. Um, because if you if you go high voltage, then you can run much lower currents, um, but sometimes it's harder to essentially put the circuitry together. Um, there'll be some people I'm sure who will say, go 48 volts, go 48 volts. And then the easiest, I guess the most um, off the shelf option is often 12 volts. But if you're running reasonably high power equipment off 12 volts, the current that you carry has to be higher. That has a downstream effect on uh, the cabling that you use and also it can make things less efficient. You want to run things at, at a lowest um, current that's, that makes sense. Anyway, so that's the plan. And I've got a couple of, in fact, I've got three, but right on board now, I've got a couple of these large 210 amp hour pure lead carbon uh, batteries. And so I've, I've not gone lithium. A lot of people will be complaining about that. They're saying, why don't you go lithium? Lithium's better. The answer is, these lead carbons give you a really nice halfway house between uh, traditional lead batteries and lithiums because you can abuse them in a very similar way which means you can deep cycle them you can cycle them a lot of times you can charge and discharge them at a seriously high current as well uh, they're a great deal cheaper than lithiums but also they're very heavy they don't lack the weight of a normal lead battery and so if they're installed low down in the boat the way i see that is free ballast because i'm going to have to pay for ballast anyhow when i install it in various locations and having a few heavy batteries towards the bottom of the boat that's no bad thing so i've gone with this sort of halfway house of uh, this new technology of uh, of lead batteries um, without necessarily going all the way to uh, to a lithium system that's the decision i've made at the moment I'm going to digress at this moment for two reasons. The first is to help settle the blood pressure of those simply incandescent with rage of my shunning of lithium boat batteries. The second is to announce the good news that dozens of you have wisely supported my channel over the last few weeks. I've been genuinely bowled over by the extent of your wisdom in the first month since the launch. Of course, it means we can support two charities. The one I chose is linked to this video for a campaign aiming to bring electricity to remote villages in Southeast Asia. I've contacted the winning donor from this month and their choice of charity will be listed on my donation page once I've heard back. So please do consider joining the wise by supporting my channel. Link is of course in the description. It'll help everything grow and generally get better. I am planning to have one lithium battery, probably a 24 volt lithium battery, which I can then use off the boat uh, for whatever I need to uh, use it for if I need power out uh, off of Allen, maybe on the ice or, or elsewhere. Uh, and also say I have a problem with the 24 volt LED, uh, LED battery system, it means I can then simply swap it over and have a, a sort of a, a backup. And redundancy is always a super important thing for, well, for something as important as power. 
So um, they are going to be sitting down below uh, in front of the engine bay in, in a battery box, which is currently sat over there, but it's big and cumbersome, so I'm not going to dig it out now. Uh, but that will take four of these batteries. So the idea is to have uh, four 12 volt batteries, uh, two banks of 24. Um, so two, two in series, another two in series, and then parallel together, if that makes sense, um, to give us uh, two banks giving us uh, 24 volts through the system. And they come up here into the front panel. And basically this panel is what I put together at home quite a while ago. And all of the complicated, complicated electrics are on the back. I'll show you that in a second. But this is essentially the, the control panel and all of the things that you need to look at and, and get at more often. So I'm having lots of isolator switches because I like the idea of being able to essentially control what's live and, and what's not. And it means, particularly for diagnostics, it's um, gonna be quite useful and for safety as well. It's good to be able to direct power into different circuits and then isolate them from others. So um, I've got basically two isolators here, one for each bank of batteries. And they come up with large high gauge uh, uh, cables all the way down from the batteries. Just the quick thing about all of the cabling that I've installed, it's all silicon cable. Uh, it's a very high quality silicon cable. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't come uh, stuck together. Like norm normally when you get DC uh, wiring, you can buy it where both the positive and the negative are sort of bonded, the two sheaths are bonded together, and it means that routing them is nice and neat. Unfortunately, it doesn't come like that, so I sometimes have to bind together or just sort of grasp together the, uh, the positives and the negatives for, for neatness uh, around the back. But anyway, that's, that's only a small gripe. So the good things about the silicon cables is that, first of all, they've got a very high strand count. So the number of wires inside them is, is very high for whatever given diameter um, that they are. And that means that they're going to be pretty good if they're flexed a lot of times. They, they, they won't fatigue and start, uh, and start giving me lots of voltage drop, which is what I don't want, or actually stop working altogether, which I definitely don't want. And the silicon sheathing itself is great because it works down at low temperatures. If I need to use any, uh, any wiring outside of the boat in cold temperatures, I know they're not going to simply snap in half like, like PVC would. I was testing some ele electrics in the Arctic last year and I, I lazily used a couple of bits of PVC sheathed cabling in the design. And even though they weren't really supposed to be flexing very much, they lasted about two days before just snap, snapping clean in half. So I've invested in silicon at every stage in, uh, in this system, which is a little bit more expensive, but I think it's gonna be worth it. The power is then sent through two different channels. I'll do the simple one first. There's gonna be a high power one up here, which will come out of that side of the, um, of, of the casing, and that's isolated here. And that's going to be able to give me the ability to run a big, powerful inverter. I don't actually have anything at the moment which I want to run off an AC inverter, but it just gives me the option. So that's just hidden away over there. Uh, and then there is going, there's, there's an ammeter which goes up to 300 amps, and that will give me a reading uh, off, uh, off that circuit. And then there's a, the common circuit I'm using is my low-power circuit, so it's isolated here. And then it runs all sorts of different systems. I've got two ammeters for it. There's one here that goes up to 100 amps and one here, if I want to be a bit more accurate and I'm not running a great deal of things, that goes up to 30 amps. And I'll be able to switch between one and the other depending on how much power we're using. Uh, what I'm not gonna do in this episode is literally do a breakdown of each and every bit. But just to give you a rough idea of what we've got here, we've got a couple of step downs. So this is taking me down from 24 volts, uh, same thing here. Uh, down to 12 volts and it basically regulates a nice constant voltage uh, because there are a lot of things I, I have here in, on the boat which are 12 volts and so at the last stage I, I do this step down and the, these units give you a nice reliable safe uh, 12 volt output uh, and a few dimmers over here these are for the three lighting circuits so we've got uh, I'll show you in a second on this side of the boat we've got a, uh, a, a strip of warm LED and on this side, cool LED, because my original idea was to make sure that in the evenings you have a warmer light, get yourself ready for bed, and then if you're working during the day, we can have a, a cooler sort of white color. So different levels of Kelvin. Um, I can't remember exactly what Kelvin rating they are, but I've just called them cool and warm. Then in the rear of the boat, there's another strip LED. These are all IP68, so weather sealed um, LED strips. Uh, so that there won't be any problems with condensation or anything like that. Uh, and that's another cool 
uh, one because the back of the boat's a working section. So that's going to be cool white light. These are relatively basic dimmers and they work. I've had one that's failed, so I'm either just gonna have a load of spares of them because they're quite straightforward, simple dimmers, or I might possibly upgrade them at some point. That's a that's a question mark. As you can see, I've also been out with my labeling machine, which is very exciting. I've only just got it, uh, and we'll do some labeling in a in a, in another episode uh, when I go more into detail about this panel here, which gives me uh, lots lots of uh, control over the external lights and the um, uh, the fans, the ventilation, all sorts of things like that. But basically, this is just a, a quick idea of what we've got. Oh, I forgot one bit. Um, this, another item, isolator switch down here, that's for the engine crank. So that's not running uh, through any of the main system. That's simply one isolator with a, a cable that comes straight from one of the batteries, straight up here to an isolator, and then it heads straight to the starter motor. And that simply means that I can stop any potential current flowing through that system at the, at the at the flick of a switch. So that's what I've done there. Uh, the actual structure of this itself is, I think this is high density polyethylene, so a normal uh, strong plastic, and so everything's mounted into there. Obviously, it's electrically isolated, so um, so everything's safe, and you don't end up with shorts or anything like that. Uh, and then I built it into a frame, which is then mounted onto a big vertical. I guess you call it a, ver a vertical girder here, which um, which goes all the way from the bottom of the hull to the um, to the uh, to the ceiling here, and uh, I've I've put I've mounted that using some rubber shock absorbers because I know that obviously the, the boat's going to vibrate. What I don't want happening is this whole si this whole uh, unit here vibrating itself crazy. Um, and I am I am, however, going to have to look at all of the different fixings I've put in, and there are a similar number of these these nuts and bolts on the other side, of course, uh, because I've used spring washers on them. And some people are okay with spring washers. Almost everything on this boat was originally designed with spring washers and nothing's fallen apart yet. And I know obviously a lot of other boats use spring washers, but there's a lot of evidence to show that spring washers do rattle themselves loose quite easily. And so I'm, I'm potentially going to swap these over. So I might have to spend a couple of hours sitting here just undoing and uh, changing over washers on, on tons of little little M5 bolts. Anyhow, that's the plan. Um, I will go into one tiny bit more detail before I clock off for this, uh, for this sort of introduction to the electrical system. And that's here that I've got um, in rather unattractive putty here, which um, again was something which was simply functional, keeps everything safe and, and safe from being shorted. Uh, but doesn't look very good. Uh, these, these are six USB outlets. Each one has its own little tr uh, little transformer out the back, and that means that if one of them dies, the whole lot don't die. So these would be three amps, meaning you get a around 15 watts per um, per outlet. So you can charge even quite high power USB devices. And of course, these days almost everything that we have <laughs> charges off USB. So this was going to be a useful thing for us to, to charge our gadgets and satellite phones and all sorts of bits and bobs. 